Welcome back to another hopefully amusing episode of The Saucy Apron. So far we have traveled to Greece, visited a taverna, even drank some ouzo. Next we spent some time in Switzerland enjoying a classic cheese fondue. Then we decided to really warm things up in Montego Bay, Jamaica, where we met up with the locals at the jerk pit and sipped some red stripes. And then closer to home, we crossed the border and shuffled off to Buffalo, home of the original Buffalo style wings, and then Paris. Ooh la la. Speaking of home, today we are staying in Canada, the true North strong and free, where we will feature a truly Canadian product enjoyed the world over, maple syrup. 70% of the syrup sold comes to the province of Quebec. Although most folks think of this sweet nectar just as something you pour over pancakes or waffles, think again. Here in Canada, we find much more inventive ways to use it. Hell, we even put it in our whiskey. We make candies, and today at the Saucy, we are going to glaze some carrots with a little honey and the delightful syrup. We're going to stuff some pork back ribs with some maple breakfast sausage and then make a very tasty Dijon honey maple basting sauce. Actually, this type of marinade or basting sauce works equal, equally well with salmon or shrimp. So sit back, relax as we traverse this rather large country and enjoy some Canadian hospitality. A. Eh? Only in Canada, you say. Wink, wink. Welcome back to the Saucy Apron Kitchen. Today, we are featuring my home country, Canada. We're going to actually do some maple sausage stuffed ribs, pork back ribs. Going to make a maple glaze, maple syrup glaze with Dijon mustard and a little bit of honey just for that extra sweetness and stickiness. So anyways, let's get right at it. What I did was I actually par, well sort of steamed the ribs. I steamed them for an hour and a half only because I just find that it really tenderizes them. I just seasoned them with some salt and pepper and then I steamed them with covered in the oven, 350 oven for about an hour, an hour and a half. And I used a cider, actually an apple cider. So I'm just going to move the ribs out of the way so that we can get right to making the stuffing. So for the stuffing, which is a traditional, almost like a, Christmas tur or turkey stuffing. I've just got some um, Wonder Bread here that I've let, that I've tore apart and let sit for a few days. What we're gonna put in it is, and generally you put all the dry ingredients together. So this is actually the maple, it's a breakfast sausage. So I car cooked that. So we're gonna put that in with this. Just move that around a little bit. Let's get to move that in there a bit. Then what I've done is finally diced up some celery and some onions. Sometimes you could soften this, but because there's enough, um, they're going to, it's going to be cooking long enough. And also there's enough fat on the pork that I don't really think that you need to, to soften it with, with adding any extra butter. You're not really basting the ribs from within, which you would be sort of if you're doing a turkey. So what we want to do is just sort of mix this together a little bit. This is our dry ingredients. I'm going to put a little bit of salt and pepper in. And I'm going to use a bit of fresh or fred, uh, dry thyme rather. A lot of people use like a poultry stuffing or a um, seasoning or a stage or sage or something, but I've got to tell you the truth, I'm not really keen on that. So anyway, I've got all the dry ingredients together. And then what I need to do is I just need to go to the fridge and get out. I've got some chicken stock. I'm going to just bind it together with a little bit of chicken stock. I should do it. You've got to kind of get your hands in here at this point. So we're just mixing this together. Now, I probably made way more stuffing than I'm going to need to put actually in the ribs. But what you can do is like I do with turkey stuffing, I just put it separately, put it in a, in a Pyrex dish just towards the end and just let it heat through. Okay, so we've got that done. I'm just going to grab the ribs again. Okay, so we're going to flip the rib over. And what we're going to do is we're just going to stuff the one side, then top the... So I'm just going to grab some stuffing here. Again, Oh yeah, that's holding together nicely. And then afterwards, once we get the ribs done, we're going to make the glaze, which basically is we're, we're showcasing maple syrup today. So we're just going to use some maple syrup, a little bit of honey, a little bit of Dijon mustard. Okay, so that's pretty much. Maybe we'll give just a little bit more because actually it is so tasty once you get the glaze and everything on it. Yeah, we can probably stick a little bit more of this on. 
So what we're gonna do now is then put the top on. What we need to do at this point is just tie it off. Tie it off in about three places so that it won't, it'll hold together nicely. And I'm just gonna wrap it in foil when I cook it. So we've got this done. I'm just gonna take these back here just for a second. Leave that, that's done. And now what we're gonna do is make, so what we've got, the star of this show is the maple syrup. I'm gonna pour the maple syrup in. We're going to put a bit of Dijon mustard in. And a little bit of honey. Okay. It's kind of interesting. I went to cooking school in France last year and We'd always grown up in North America thinking that you always had to have the shiny side in. Well, for some reason, Europeans don't seem to care. They cook with it on either side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it like this so that it overlaps a little bit. I'm going to grab our ribs again, drop them over this side, with my basting brush. We're going to give them a good baste. I have the oven set at 325, so I'm going to cover these like wrap them in the foil and cook them for at least an hour. Now, I, like I said, I've already pre-cooked them for about an hour and a half. So they should be nice and tender when they're done. And then I'm gonna, pro I'll check them again in an hour and probably unwrap it so that they do start to brown up a little bit. This gets to be a little bit messy when you're doing this, but. Okay, I just need to flip that over. So we're just gonna give them a really, really good going over. Just try to get the sides of the ribs as well. Like I said, the stuffing, you know, with, with having the actual maple sausage in there, there's a little bit of fat inside, so it's not, so it sort of does sort of self bait. So, plus let's face facts, ribs are fatty. There's no two ways about it. Even though I steamed them off, there's still a fair bit of fat. Okay, so I'm just gonna wrap them up now. Put the ribs back on here. And we're going to pop that in, like I said, the oven's preset. We're going to let them sit for an hour, and then we're going to unwrap them, and we're going to give them another nice basting up, and then they should be just perfect. Well, welcome back. What we're going to do now is actually we're featuring maple syrup today. Again, incredibly typical Canadian product that it's enjoyed the world over. But this time what we're going to do, and I've actually, I've made these a few times for friends, and they are so good. It's a maple and honey glazed carrot with I put a little bit of olive oil in a little bit of salt and pepper and I've been using actually dried coriander as well so let's just get at it so what we're going to do is I'm going to put just a little bit of olive oil in to start not too much a little bit of honey and the star of our show maple syrup So a little bit of pepper. A little bit of salt. And a little bit of dried coriander. Okay, just need to stir this up a little bit. Make sure everything gets really, really good and sticky. Then you just want to bake these in a you know, 350 oven for about 25 minutes. And actually what I've used here is just those mantis carrots, which are actually a really, really sweet carrot, as well as I've used a few heritage carrots because I do like the color. It adds a little bit of something. Let's just get them a little bit more organized here in the dish. And because our ribs are just about finished, I'm gonna pop them in there. So they're gonna probably just finish off for the last half hour with the ribs. Okay, I'm just gonna pop them in the oven. Okay, so to finish off our lovely Canadian feast, we're gonna make a creamy coleslaw, which is very, very traditionally served, is very traditional, often served with ribs. So what we're gonna do is, what I've done is I've just lightly chopped up some green cabbage, which I prefer, to be honest. We're gonna make the dressing. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna start with about a half a cup of mayonnaise. put that in there. I use, if you've been watching the show at all, you'll notice, I use zero fat Greek yogurt with everything as opposed to sour cream. 
I, much better for you. This, this particular product actually is a probiotic as well. Much better for you. Cuts the calories. Personally, I like the taste. It's a little bit sour. So anyways, just gives us a little bit of a stir up here. Then, again, I like to add horseradish to everything that I can get away with. So a little bit of hot horseradish in here. Just gives it a little bit of an extra zip. Get in there. And we need to thin this out just a little bit. So what I'm going to use is, I'm going to use some apple cider vinegar. Again, just put a little bit in. Thin it out a bit. And to counteract the acidity and the sourness, I'm going to put a little bit of white sugar in. Again, standard, a little bit of salt and pepper. Let's just give it a little bit mix up, and then I might actually whisk it up a little bit just to smooth it out. Let's put that in there. Now, the best part of the tasting. I have to tell you, that's absolutely perfect. Doesn't need anything else. Put the cabbage in here. Again, you could do this the day before. I like to do it a few hours before. Cabbage is always better if it has a chance to sort of meld a little bit. We're going to just present our meal now. Everything is finished and it, it looks wonderful. First of all, we have our creamy coleslaw. Let's put that up there for your viewing pleasure. Then we have our maple glazed, maple and honey glazed carrots rather, which will be a very, very big hit with your company. And of course, the real star of the show are the spare ribs. And actually, it's kind of cute. I'm serving them on the, this cutting board. My father was a butcher, and so he basically introduced our family to spare ribs. But th this cutting board was his cutting board, and the cutting board itself is probably, oh my God, I, I wouldn't even know, 60 or 70 years old. So I thought it was rather apropos and tribute to my father, who is no longer with us. I just thought, well, you know what? I'll serve the spare ribs. And he loved them this way. He loved them stuffed. So for everybody, please enjoy, and thank you again for coming to Canada with us. For all the ingredients to any of my shows, please go to my website, www.thesaucyapron-taiwanon.com. Thank you. This land is your land. This land is my land. From Mona Vista to the Vancouver Island. From the Arctic Circle to the Great Lake Water. This land was made for you and me As I went walking That ribbon of highway I saw above me That in the skyway I saw below me That golden valley This land was made for you and me This land is your land This land is my land From Mona Vista to the Vancouver Island, from the Arctic Circle, to the Great Lake Water. This land was made for you and me. When the sun came shining, and I was strolling, and the wheat fields waving, and the dust clouds rolling, as the bomb was lifting, a voice was chanting, saying, this land was made for you and me. This land is your land. This land is my land. From Mona Vista to the Vancouver Islands, from the Arctic Circle to the Great Great Water. This land was made for you and me. When the sun came shining and I was strolling and the wheat fields waving. And the dust clouds rolling As the bomb was lifting A voice was chanting Saying This land was made for you and me This land is your land This land is my land From Mona Vista To the Vancouver Islands From the Arctic Circle To the Great Lake Water This land was made for you and me